uplift the lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. It is Lonnie Hunter, ladies and gentlemen, with you right now, right here at this time with a get it done mindset of the day to help you further you. How about that? Listen, I want to challenge where you are uh, as opposed to where you were. And what I mean by that, and I want you to hear me as a man or a woman with a get it done mindset, if you view the world at 40 or 50, The same way you did when you were 20, you have just wasted 20 years of your life. If you view the world at 20 the same way you viewed the world at 15, five years of your life have been wasted. If you view the world at 40 
the same way you viewed it when you were 30, 10 years gone. What am I saying to you? You have got to live and learn. You have got to grow. You have got to succeed. You have got to fail. You have got to love. You have got to have been hurt, have your heart broken, all of that, so that you can see yourself getting up and trying again and making it better. Listen to me. If you don't have those experiences and you don't learn from them, you are bound to repeat the same mistakes that repeatedly give you the same result. So what am I saying to you? Live, family. If you see the world the same way at 40 that you did at 20, 20 years of your life has been wasted. What you been doing? But it's not too late, family. You can still get it done. All you got to do is get on it, baby. It's your boy Lonnie with your get it done mindset of the day. Do it. Get it done. Go. Happy holidays. I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your gospel news. After mentoring with Reverend Clay Evans, founder of Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church of Chicago, senior pastor, faith leader, songwriter, producer, and all-around entrepreneur, Reverend Charles Jenkins took over the reins of the Missions Choir, Fellowship Chicago. They released a blockbuster gospel album entitled The Best of Both Worlds in 2012, led by the single Awesome, which entered the gospel singles charts at number one in 2012. Respecting the gospel tradition, but also working to update it by gently merging the 21st century urban recording techniques and trends, Charles Jenkins hit another sweet spot with his second album with Fellowship Chicago, Any Given Sunday, in 2014. This album topped the gospel charts once again, led by the release of his hit single, War. Although he worked as an actor and comedian for many years, it wasn't until 2005 when Jamie Foxx became hugely famous. In the 1990s, Fox was primarily known as a stand-up comedian. He had an uncanny knack for mimicking almost anyone. He was also a regular on television, appearing on the comedy sketch program In Living Color and starring in his own self-titled top-rated sitcom from 1996 to 2001, The Jamie Foxx Show. Fox eventually branched off into film, appearing in a few low-budget films, but then his breakout came with Oliver Stone's Any Given Sunday. In 2005, Jamie Foxx made unlikely Hollywood history by becoming the first African-American performer to be nominated for two Academy Awards in the same year. He was in the running for Best Supporting Actor for his work in the suspense thriller Collateral. And he was also contender for Best Actor for his performance of Ray Charles in the movie Ray. The 37-year-old Jamie Foxx took home the Oscar for Best Actor, making him only the third African-American male to take home the Covenant Gold statue. Jamie Foxx was born December 13, 1967, born Eric Marlon Bishop in the small town of Terrell, Texas. He was raised by his grandmother and grandfather, Mark and Esther Talley. Esther Talley had a profound impact on her adopted son, Jamie Foxx, often credits her for being his main inspiration. Jimmy Fox was raised a devoted Christian. The Tallies did not allow any non-religious music to be played in the house. However, she did insist that Jamie Foxx learn to play the piano. By the age of 13, he was making almost $300 a month playing piano at events around town. By the age of 14, he was a director and choir leader at Terrell's New Hope Baptist Church. Singer, composer, and arranger, Morette Brown Clark, born and raised in Long Island, New York, began singing at the age of four. She took her first private piano lessons by the age of six, going on to perform exclusively with her family gospel group as well as with a series of high school and college vocal ensembles. After turning professional, Morette Brown Clark backed many gospel artists, including C.C. Winans and Hezekiah Walker. Her solo debut came in 1998 with the album How I Feel. After receiving a Dove nomination for the record, she took a break and worked on her second album. The results were the album By His Grace, which was released in 2002. Here's your blazing hot praise, top 10 gospel songs. 
Number 10, Anthony Brown and Group Therapy with Blessings on Blessings. 9, Jermaine Dolly and Miranda Curtis with Pull Us Through. 8, Tasha Cobbs Leonard with You Know My Name. 7, J.J. Harrison and Youthful Praise with Miracle Worker. 6, Jacqueline Carr, I See Miracles. 5, Pastor Mike Jr. with Big. 4, Zacardi Cortez, You Don't Know. 3, John P. Key featuring Zacardi Cortez with I Made It Out. Two, Jonathan McReynolds, Make Room. And number one, now for nine weeks in a row, James Fortune featuring Deborah Carolina with I Am. Well, that's your Blazing Hot Praise top ten songs and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor reminding you to connect with me on all social media and write me at the Gospel News with Nina at gmail.com. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Hello, I'm Nina Taylor, your Gospel News reporter, and you're listening to The Pastor's Corner with my friend, Elder Ernest Richard, on Elation Radio. And you can listen to my great friend, Nina Taylor, each and every Thursday at 10 p.m., right here on The Pastor's Corner. I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard, Jr., a.k.a. Preacher 719, and we want to welcome you to this wonderful show that we are on today. As always, joining me is my pro- my brother and my partner in God's crown, if there's such a thing, Apostle Irvin Whitlow. How are you, my brother? Man of God, I am so elated that God has been so good to allow us one more time to come together on the pastor's corner. We say welcome to you. And every one of you, those of you who are joining us through the different uh, social media places like Facebook or through Spricker Radio, uh, iTunes, or uh, uh, what's that? Uh, You know the other ones that iHeart. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of, you know, and all the other ones. I can't keep up with it. Amen. I'm just so to the point where we're about to be syndicated, and that's just it. Amen. I just feel that in my sanctified pinky toe. So we just grateful well, of what God is doing. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Listen, I'm personally down here in Tabari, Haiti. We're at Generations of Hope, the Go Haiti uh, Orphanage and Compound, and we're broadcasting by way of Facebook Live, social media. So I want to welcome my Facebook Live people. I see some of my people. I see Prophet Torin Leak and. Brother David Benton, among others, and I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us. And, of course, we're looking for the man of the hour who's going to take us through the final part of a wonderful discussion that started some two or three weeks ago, and I pray that we have him on the line, none other than Apostle Vincent Smith. But before I call for him, let me find out if we have any of the other crew. I'm looking for Pastor Westbrook, Pastors Darrell and Donna Pointer. Are you with us tonight? Okay, going once, going twice. I gather they're not here just yet, but they'll show up when they're available. All right, how about Apostle Smith? Are you with us tonight? Oh, boy. Okay. Are you there? All right. Well, we're going to have to do what we do. We're going to have to try to get him on the line here. Uh uh, uh, Prophet Torin Leak, if you'll be so kind as to reach out to Apostle Smith and tell him that the pastor's corner is on the air, I would greatly appreciate that, sir. I know you should be with us. Are you here? God bless you. Yes, sir. I am here. All right. If I can get you to click over and get Apostle Smith on the line, you know. And first of all, before you do that, I need you to greet the audience to say hello and then reach out to him to find out where our brother is. I often say, don't start a fight if you ain't going to finish it. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, good evening, Radio Land. Uh, it's so good to be back for another week. Um, I'm glad to be in from the beginning of the conversation as opposed to last week when I was on in the middle. Um, looking forward to a great show. Uh, and thank you again, um, Elder Richards and uh, Apostle Whitlow. And looking forward to what God shall do tonight. Amen. The Lord Amen. Bless you, Amen. So Amen. give us a few minutes to get set up 
Uh, and once again, those of you by social media, if you are watching, please, please invite your followers. We want you to invite. Tonight's going to be the last show for the year 2019, and we want to go out with a bang, have an opportunity and chance for some of you to literally just call in if you so desire and to share with us. The number to call in is area code 646-564-9842. That number again, 646-564-9842. Well, Apostle Whitlow, I'm going to put it in. Let me pray, and then I'm going to put it in here to get us set up. Oh, there we go. That's him. Who is that, Apostle Smith? The one and only. Is that Apostle (laughs) Smith? Grace and peace to you all tonight. We bless God for this opportunity to be on the line again tonight. And we're looking for a great close out tonight with my friend Elder Richard, Pastor Whitlow, and the Prophet Torlik. Amen. Yes. Amen. Well, let us get into prayer and let us get into teach mode, preach mode, and whatever mode the Lord's going to give to us. I like how the scripture says, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. And we're not about to leave here, but we are about to leave this spot and move to that next level, and if necessary, the next dimension. So let's go up in prayer. As a matter of fact, Prophet Leek, since you're here, pray us in today, my brother. Absolutely. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you, God, for another opportunity to gather uh, on this platform. We pray that as we break open the bread of life tonight, Father, not only that we just speak words, Lord God, out of the air, God, but that we speak your divine wisdom. We pray that on tonight, God, that those that are listening will be captivated, not by us, but by your word. We pray that your anointing will draw them that their hearts and their minds will be open and receptive to what it is that you're speaking. We pray for fresh download and clarity and your anointing. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. And amen. 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 All right, get us set up, Apostle Smith, so that we can go into the discussion, please. Well, praise the Lord tonight. Amen. We have been discussing for several weeks now. Amen. Under the entitlement, Ding Dong, the witch is dead. Amen. And I give God all the praise for that word out of Exodus uh, chapter 22, verse 18. Amen. Suffer not a witch to live. Amen. Then we've also been over in Deuteronomy. Chapter 18, discussing the various uh, works of darkness or the works of black magic that the Lord warned his people not to get involved with. Amen. And then uh, we've been talking the last week or so. Amen. The Lord blessed us to make it to verse 5. There in Deuteronomy 18, how he said he would raise a prophet. Amen. And I want you to know tonight, amen, out of Exodus, we discovered that anything that a person of the world of sorcery, when it says suffer not a witch to live, when you uh-huh. look at other translations, it makes it plain, it makes it sure. It gives you better understanding. It really says anyone under the works of sorcery, under the works of casting spells, under the works, amen, of trying to set somebody up in a demeaning way as in putting a curse on them or something, it says you suffer Uh. them not to live. All right. And then we, went, then we went over to Deuteronomy, and we begin to see, we begin to see in the book of Deuteronomy, 
that there are mm-hmm. several pieces of the world of darkness that the Lord has spoken to his people not to get involved with. Sacrificing your right. children by fire. Amen. He, 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 he really warned us there that don't start being like other folks and think you're worshiping at the altar and you're burning or sacrificing your children by such torture. Amen. And then we, we discovered he told us not to be involved with soothsaying. Amen. Cattle cars, Ouija boards, all this kind of stuff. Amen. Then we discovered we're not supposed to be, amen, involved with tarot cards, involved with bone reading, involved with, with all these different things. And then here's the clincher. It told us that we should not be involved with talking to the dead. Oh, I got to put a pin right there. Amen. I'll never forget that week because we discovered in that discussion how is it in the word of God, it distinctly showed us that the dead can't even get to the dead. So what is your grandmama and your uncle and auntie doing sitting on your bed? Lord have mm. mercy. Jesus. Amen. We, we, we discovered that even in the body of Christ, a whole lot of stuff that we've been saying is the spirit of God. And God did this and did that. It ain't that but the world of darkness. But thanks be to God, he has raised up a prophet. But I'm going to allow these brothers to hone in on that that I've said thus far. Amen. That we may refresh you and remind you of things that we have already discussed. All right, go ahead. Um, I, I, I just I just want to get to this because after all that you said, man of God, the thing that stands out in my mind is that God raised up a prophet, not somebody raised up themselves and called themselves a prophet, but God did it. And it's my personal belief that there are some things that only God can do. We are in a day and time now where you have people having classes trying to train people or teach people how to say that God said or trying to teach people and train people how to speak in tongues and interpret tongues and, and all of these different things. And, I, and but, but when God does it, you don't have to sit there and try to get someone to do it because I found out that God is good at being God. And he doesn't need any help being God, so people need to let God be God. The other thing is the the reason God raised up a prophet is to steer people in the right direction. So people of God, please hear this when I say this. If you are not certain which direction to go in, if you are not certain what you should be doing or what your life should be like, Look for the prophet that God has raised up to speak into your life, to give you clarity, to give you assurance, to give you something to help you to go where you need to go. Because without a prophet, the truth be told, you are simply lost. Just like some people are driving and they don't have a sense of direction. They don't have a GPS system. So all they know is what they're following other folk doing but don't know where everybody's going because this one going to that exit, that one turning over here and turning over there and you trying to figure out where you're supposed to go you need if you will a prophet that can direct you in the right direction come on prophet leak come on you there prophet. yeah oh, here we go. come on prophet all right so what i was saying was what resonates in my spirit after after hearing apostle whitmo speak is the scripture where it says if you believe in the lord your god so shall you be established if you believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. And I must concur that you need a prophet in your life. One thing I'm finding is that many people have disregarded the voice of the prophet because of the witches and because of the soothsayers. Um, and what I'm finding is, is that with the rejection of the prophet, we miss God. Oftentimes, mm. people fail to realize is that the prophet is the voice of God in the earth. 
And so when you disregard the prophet, you're disregarding what God is trying to say to you. And so many people have said that they have heard God, they've heard God and God has spoken to them, yet they have no, uh, they have no evidence. There's no fruit of anything that God has said, quote, unquote, because they have disregarded the word of the prophet. Um, not so much that we regard the voice of the prophet over God, but when you're referring to a prophet, uh, you receive the prophet, uh, you receive God's voice to you. And so what I would encourage people to do is, one, find out and understand what a prophet is. Understand uh, that the prophet is not God, but they speak on behalf of God. And find out how you can prosper when you obey the prophet. Mm. My God. Well, having heard what has been said up to this present point, and I do want to welcome the Facebook Live audience. I thank you for two different speeches. Uh, so many different wonderful people on. Thank you all for joining us. And as uh, Apostle Whistler said earlier, whether you're on iHeartRadio, whether you're on Spricker Radio, whether you're on Blog Talk Radio, Excuse me, whether you're on the TuneIn app, whether you're on YouTube, wherever you're listening to us from, we welcome you into this discussion. The discussion is entitled Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead. Uh, the discussion is being led by Apostle Vincent L. Smith, uh, accompanying us, accompanying, accompanying us tonight <laughs> is Apostle Irvin Whitlow and Prophet Torin Leak, and I'm Elder Ernest E. Richard, Jr., uh, AKA Preacher 719. My take is this we live in a day and age where we hear a lot of false prophecy, where we have a lot of materialistic prophets, men and women who say that they got a message from God or they heard a message from God, or they'll tell you that I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, or they turned down their chicken dinner and left their fried turkey off to the side so that they could get a word. And next thing you know, they turned down Jimmy Swaggart or TD Jakes or Noel Jones, and then they come back and bring you a word that's already been dipped in sauce, but trying to make convince you that they heard. In this day and age, a true prophet will a number one come in this day and age. Now let's go back for a minute, gentlemen, before we uh, jump and put it back in the hands of Apostle Smith. Back in the day, the prophet was the one who brought the word, whether it was a, a message, a warning. Uh, whether it was a, a, a something that the Lord may have shared or wanted the people to know. We have several examples of that. We could talk about a time when the word was brought forth, when it was time to go to battle, when Deborah, a woman, had to lead men in, uh, through Barak, lead men into war. We could talk about a time when an authority, a uh, president, a king, if you want to put it that way, did something he wasn't supposed to do, and the prophet had to be careful how he brought the message to him and let him know that you messed up, son, and God is looking for you to get it straight. But well, my point is simply this. Back in those days, the prophets brought a message, and they brought, it sounded like gloom, it sounded like gloom, but if the people repented, it turned into something that was of a prosperous nature. Today's prophet is very much in line because, A, number one, God is not going to uh, bring a word uh, to you that you have not already received. Am I right on this, gentlemen? Absolutely. 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 Talk to me. I mean, because at the end of the day, uh, one of the biggest things that a prophet is come to do is, if you will, to strengthen the word that you have already received or what we call confirm. Yeah, very rare. Very rare does a prophet come with something that you haven't heard before. Not, in most of the cases, it is something that you have been made, been made aware of, and so that prophet comes to reassure you um, uh, of the word. But not only that, here's something else. The biggest reason that the prophet comes is for this to edify, that's build up, exhort. Strengthen you and comfort To let you know that the promise That God has made you Will still come to pass But sometimes you have to be yes. tweaked And when you are in strengthened Because of the weakness of waiting 
for what you're looking for. So the prophet is always going to reaffirm something that you heard. One some, and something else I want to tap into that uh, uh, prophet Torin Leek said. He says, believe in the Lord your God so shall you be established. Believe in his prophet so shall you prosper. That word prosper is not what people think in the sense of getting well. It is really interpreted help for the journey. So the prophet comes to give you help for your journey. Why? Because you don't want to find yourself going in a direction that God did not ordain for your life. Come on, talk here, man of God. Come on. Listen, if, if, if it is help, if it is, now you done started something now. If it is help for the journey, then how is a lot of this junk that's going on now a help to anybody? Ooh. Come on. I want you oh, to understand. Uh-huh. I want you to understand, people of God. Amen. You cannot play games with this prophetic gift, this prophetic anointing. Amen. Coming in the church, reading people's emotions and all this kind of stuff. Amen. Looking at their faces. They already look down, so you're going to call them out. Oh, you've been going through. Well, I guess so. They look like they've been sucking living for the last four weeks. Uh, <laughs> well, I want you to understand. I want you to understand. And I, I just want to go through a short list. We, we, if you go back in time a little bit, that is the prophet Bronham who uh-huh. came to California years ago. Uh-huh was doing uh-huh. meetings and different things, and he began to prophesy and tell the people, get ready, there's a flood coming off the coast of California. Come on. Come on. Oh, they laughed, they laughed, they laughed. But when the flood, when the waters started lifting up from the Pacific Ocean and started coming uh-huh. on land, Believe me, Saints, I'm not whistling Dixie. Go on your YouTube, pull up Prophet Bronham. The prophecy is on there. And then they show you the news clip of when the, the Pacific Ocean began to come in to California. That mm. is the prophet. The prophet comes to war. The prophet comes to tell you, Things that are either good or bad that's about to happen, to, mm-hmm. as, Apostle, as Apostle Whitlow just said, to give you direction for the journey. Mm. He, gave, he gave the prophetic utterance about the flood. Instead of people taking direction for the journey, they begin to laugh at them. Uh huh. Mm. But the prophetic word came to pass. Yes. Uh-huh. It also, also a lot of people call her the faith healer because she did a lot of healing. But also, Catherine Kuhlman was a prophet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And, and, that's and right. I need y'all. I, I need y'all to also take a look at her. Amen. On the YouTube. She was delivering the commencement speech at ORU Uh years ago. And in the middle, in the middle of her commencement speech, she turned around and prophesied, watch this name, and prophesied to Carlton Pearson, who was Mm -hmm. the valedictorian of the class, and told him prophetically that day, to keep himself before God because God was going to take him to great heights. But if he did not stay before God, Satan would come in and take him in the wrong Mm. direction. Mm. Amen. And when you talk about following, the prophet comes to give direction for the journey. This is why I'm bringing this out because Somewhere along the way, he got off the journey, got off the course. 
And now he's out there teaching this off doctrine because he did not follow through with the prophetic word of my God. If you ever gonna follow a prophetic word, look like he would have followed a word from Catherine Kuhlman if nobody else. Right. right. This was one Come of the on. greatest women women evangelists that ever oh my God, that ever walked in this country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. You know? And then I'm going to move up real close to us. That is a young man raised up out of this New Haven, Connecticut, known across this country as the prophet Brian Mosley. Brian Mosley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who I walk with, travel with. Amen. Had yeah. As the minister in his place at times. Mm-hmm. I, I've been with him in three-hour prayer and all this yeah. kind of stuff. But I can remember in the services him being so tuned into God that he'll be preaching uh-huh. and just stop all of a sudden and say, there's a word getting ready to come from the Lord. Amen. And somebody would get up, and somebody would get up, boom, 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 then somebody would get up nice and quiet and begin to go forth in tongues. He said, here comes the word. Mm-hmm. Here comes the word. I want everybody to listen. Here comes the word. See, the, mm-hmm. prophet is not, the, the prophet is not just a man come to, to, to point out a new car. If you look long enough, you're going to find it. Yeah. Amen. That, that not, yeah. That just to, to, to prophesy a house and the keys. But a prophet is so tuned into God that the prophet literally knows the wind, the rain. Oh, my. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. They know exactly what God is doing in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how much a prophet is supposed to be tuned in, amen, to God. Now, here's the last one I want to talk about. I've been in the presence. He is a bishop now, but I've been in the presence of Prophet Tom Todd Hall. Yeah. This yeah. man of God, this man of God, down at Bethany Baptist Church, down there in New Jersey, Bishop uh, David oh, Evans is the pastor. They uh-huh. gave Todd a they gave Todd Hall the mic. This brother began to call people by name. And yes. began to minister to them direction for life. Watch this now. Mm-hmm. That wasn't even in the building, but were members of Bishop Evans Church. Jesus. Uh-huh. He said, there's a name. I, I don't remember the exact name. I'm just going to use the name. He said, there's a name, Mary Jane, coming to me. Said, Mary Jane does this, that, and the other in this ministry. He said, is Mary Jane here? They said, no, not tonight. He said, get her on the phone. Mm. Now, come on now. How, how many prophets you know to my call somebody on the phone? Well, he there you said, go. Come call on. her on the phone because I got a direct word for her. Mm. The bishop himself, she was one of the officials at the church. The bishop himself called her on the phone, told her that the man of God had called her name out, and then put her on loudspeaker. Mm. When Hall got finished ministering to that woman, she was on the phone hollering and screaming and crying that there was no way he could have known the things he said except God had given it to him. Jesus. Well, you, let, let, let me say this as we as we move further into it. It's evident that when you are connected, as we had said not that long ago, when you have a connection with God through the Holy Spirit, that you walk with God, literally talk with God. People never really understood, even when you go into the scriptures, every time the Lord Jesus Christ ministered, what did he always do after he finished ministering? The first thing he did was he went off into a quiet place 
and he began to seek the face of God for direction, for, uh, you know, information and for whatever it is that he may have had need of. And a lot of prophets today are so busy stuffing themselves with Kentucky Fried Chicken or Popeyes and fighting over the chicken sandwich or whatever the case may be, that they don't have that quality time that it takes to hear a word from the Lord so that when they come before the people of God, they are ready to minister to the people. A prophet's job also is to bring a sense of healing and wholeness, closure and completion to the individual to whom they're ministering to. What is wrong with today's prophets and not all of them but a great number of them. What's wrong with today's prophets well, that they're not keeping clearly from the Lord? What's wrong? Let, Somebody well, talk to me. Let, let me let me let me get in on that right there. Here's what I have discovered, and I say this in the most purest way I know how. A lot of these uh-huh. prophets today are looking for two things. They're looking to get paid and they're looking to get laid. That's it. You, you know say? and the fact they're looking to get paid, they're looking to get laid. What they do is they go somewhere and they, as you said before, uh, Apostle Smith, they're looking at people's emotions and rolling on people's emotions. And then what they do is they try to ride that to get into their pocketbook. And then after they get in their pocketbook, they unfortunately want to get between the legs and it is not right. Here's another thing that I believe should not take place. I believe that when a prophet is finished ministering, a prophet don't need to go and hang out. With everybody, a prophet needs to go somewhere and be isolated from exactly. everyone else. And and not only does he need to be isolated, but he needs a set of prayer warriors who will insulate him and keep him from being contaminated with his flesh. You don't hear me? Because here's the reality: anybody who spends time ministering when they are finished, they are vulnerable in the spirit. And nobody don't want to deal with that. Let's tell the truth. Any person get through using, doing what God calls them to do, when you're finished, there is something called horniness that takes over your body. And if you don't go somewhere and let God minister to you and pour into you, you will find yourself in the wrong bed. And when you wake up in hell, you can't be mad. I wish somebody talked to me. Lord, let me tell you. Let me tell you something, man of God. I got a treat sitting right here with me tonight. The prophet, the the the, the prophet, uh, Brashet Jordan is here tonight. Woo. Wait a minute, Bro- uh, Apostle. I was the treat last week. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the prophet wants she want to hold in for a minute. Well, Lord come on, Jesus. prophet. Come on, prophet. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Like, I was just expounding to Apostle Smith as you guys were talking um, what Apostle Whitlow said. What I said to him was the reality of it is nowadays prophets have gotten a bad name from all the glitz and glamour of, you know, what other people have done. But then they don't Uh keep the faith of God enough to really know what God is saying. And I've seen it where prophets will go just to, just because somebody want a word or expecting a word, they'll go into the Bible and get a scripture out and then try to expound on that scripture to get a word real quick from the Lord, knowing that he didn't say anything to them about that person or about a situation. Or uh-huh. when you said they either want to get paid or laid, my goodness. There are so many prophets for hire, and God gave me that about a year ago when he said that, that the prophets are, are making him into a money, what was it? That my prophets are making me into a money, oh, I forgot, it's written down. But um, it's, more about, it's more about money and the glitz and the glamour of being a prophet and um, that, that, that people have made it out to be. And, mm-hmm. and when he said getting paid and laid, that thing just did something to me because a lot of people – won't won't go out and 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 minister if they're not getting paid, and that's mm, that's a on. dangerous place for a prophet to be because if God gives you yeah. a word to minister to a house and you won't go because the, the price isn't right, that's a dangerous place to be. Mm. Well, let, let me add to, let me add to that. Let me add to that. When you uh, yeah, hold on, Apostle. Go ahead. Back with what you just shared, and thank you so much for being with us tonight. 
uh, a proper approach for any prophet that's in tune with God should be what? When it's time to come and minister before the people. I mean, we can't put a time zone or time frame on this kind of thing. But walk us through what it takes for you to receive from God, because I want people to understand that this thing is real, more real than the air they're breathing, that God really does use you as prophets, as mouthpieces, to speak his word, to encourage and to steer and give direction and point the people toward, A, number one, the cross of Christ and the way of the Lord. So what does it take for you personally to get in a good place with God so that you're able to minister before the people? Come on. What is it doing? It's very tough for you. Oh, me. I'm talking oh, to Charlie. No. Oh, She's I, coming. Oh, for me, it takes a lot of fasting and praying. Uh-huh. <laughs> Continually seeking God's face and, and, and being and being in that in that humble place to where God can use me and speak through me how he needs to speak through me. Amen. What about you, Prophet Lee? <laughs> I, I would agree with Prophet Garland. It, it certainly takes a lot of time of, of prayer and saying before the Lord, but it also takes uh, being in the word of God as well. Uh, that's where our strength comes from. And if we are not in the scriptures, we cannot accurately prophesy because sometimes God is not always going to speak to us audibly, but sometimes he will speak to us through the word. And when there is not an audible word, there's always the logos word. Amen. All right. I brought that up for this reason. Because, and I'm putting it back in your hands, Apostle Smith, as we look at today, uh, the church today, not just the black church, white churches, Hispanic churches, churches in general, do we see a true-to-life movement on numerous occasions, or are we seeing a circus? A good friend of mine, Dr. Michael Green, down here, he has a show called My Brother's Keeper. He would always say, his mother used to have a saying that says, pitch a tent and the circus will be in town. Are we looking mm. at the circus in stage, or are we looking at a move of God that's about to take us to a new place? Well, let me, let me say, man of God, I, I, I believe in that statement, but then you have to be able, and just like the scripture that there are sheep and goats. You have to be able to distinguish when the circuit is coming and when the power of God is getting ready to move. Uh, uh, that Amen. There are certain, there are certain telltale things. Uh, we had a man uh-huh. come to our church years ago. I'm not even going to call the name because y'all would know him. But uh, he, he told <laughs> us, count the miracles as I do it. Mm. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. How many miracles can we do on our own? Not a one. Not a one. And, and when, when he got Not finished one. that night, when, when he got finished that night, Elder Richard, you know my father, Prophet Nick, you knew him. He got up yeah. and that and blasted him in the nicest way that you ever could. He stood up and said. He said, I don't know about watching people do miracles. He said, the only thing I know that if God don't do it, it can't be done. And said, now that's all stands on. Mm. And for those that don't understand, let, give it to you in English. If you ain't for real, sit your behind down. That was your behind down. down. Let, 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 me, let me tap into this, too. Because Pastor Whitlow said something. He started something that was so powerful. And, and, uh-huh. and she done come in and picked up on it. Amen. But I want to talk about that pay and lay. Yeah. See, I, I'm <laughs> sick. I am sick of preachers, period. I'm going to take that out of profit mode. I'm sick of preachers, period, who, and I'm going to say it like this, who have an anointing. But using the anointing to cover up their real agenda. Oh my God! Oh, All right. that's powerful, right there, Apostle. They All come into right. a service. They come into a service and preach like six angels is backing them up. They can prophesy with accuracy, but at the same time that they're preaching and prophesying, they're also scoping the crowd to see mm. whose panties is coming off next. Come on. 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 Come
come on. Get, well, listen. Wait, said nothing. And, 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 and wait a minute. And wait a minute. Not only who's that is, who's draws. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> wait a minute. So there's a difference because I'm going to hold that one for a minute there. <laughs> listen, listen, let me. Yes, because it's, a, it's an amazing thing that you bring that up, you know. And Dr. Virginia Singleton says, fast, pray, study the word, spend time seeking God's face. And I agree with you, Dr. Singleton. Uh, and for those of you that want to come on and voice your comments by way of uh, over the airwaves, and we pray that you don't come on with a personal agenda. My sister Kimmy Kim is sitting right there at the handle, and if she has to mute you, unfortunately, it will happen. But you can dial 646-564-9842. That number again, 646-564-9842. The name of subject title tonight, we're coming to the conclusion of something called Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead. The scriptures tell us in Deuteronomy chapter 18 that the Lord himself said he will not suffer a witch to live. And there's a reason why a witch cannot live. Also says is that he's also going to raise up a prophet, meaning God is going to take you out of the way of error and put you into the way, into the truth, and into the light so that you could have life. All right, taking us through again is Apostle Vincent Smith. Apostle, back in your hands. Let's take it to the second half of the show. Yeah, watch this now. Watch this. With all that the enemy tries to do, the scripture says all God has to do is raise up a prophet. Mm-hmm. Here's that. Here's that. A, a whole car load of prophets. He, he didn't say a whole bus load of prophets. That means that the job or the anointing or the work of the prophet is so powerful that all kinds of disarray can be going on. But when God opens the mouth of the prophet, it cuts down everything else that's going on. Amen. It, that's kills, something. it, it, it kills the work <coughs> of the enemy when the prophet, now I, I'm talking about the real anointed prophet. Amen. I, I, ain't talking about what, I ain't talking about those we were just talking about. But when mm-hmm. God raised up a prophet, when their mouth come open, it immediately shut down the work of the enemy. Amen. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me get in right there. Let me get in right there. Some years ago, when I was in St. Louis, um, I still had a church building in Savannah, Georgia. I will never forget that the saints would call me and tell me about the prayer meetings and about the revival services, and they would tell me about some of the preachers who would come in. And, you know, it's customary in the black church that when you have a guest preacher in the house, when you before you close your service, you allow them to have words. So this particular night, they told me there was a prophet sitting in the audience, and they said, before uh-huh. we close the service, before we close the service, we want to let this man of God, prophet so-and-so, have a few words. Said they gave the prophet the microphone, and the prophet said, God is looking for people to be holy. He said, but there's, there are too many people in here pretending by serving God when they know they're really homosexuals on the DL and got Jezebels in the pulpit. And they said somebody said, yelled out, take that microphone from him. That's not of God. And what it is is that when God starts exposing stuff, people get upset and people want to run. Amen. But the, here's the reality. You can't run from God. You can't hide from God. Most of all, you cannot be delivered unless God sends somebody to deliver you. And I believe we're in a day and time where people really don't want a true prophet because they don't want to be delivered. And that's why they don't have a problem accepting a popular prophet but not a true prophet prophet. We don't need a popular, listen at me when I say this, we don't need a popular prophet because a popular prophet is only trying to populate his pocket or populate his household. I'm sorry, did I say populate? I meant, you know, populate. You know, they just populate, but they pop. Okay, let me go on. I need you to understand what somebody needs to know is that God is calling for the true ones to stand, the true ones to decree and declare his word. But 
sometimes to be the true one, God has to put you in hiding and don't let everybody know what's going on with you until it's time to bring you out of hiding so that everybody will know that you've been before God and not anyone else. Come on, somebody, talk in here. Okay. If I can jump All right. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. It was mentioned a little while ago about these prophets who have entourage when, when really the prophet is called to a lonely place. Mm, that's right. Now, the only time in Scripture I read about the prophet and an entourage was through Jezebel. Her prophet... Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I just, I just started something. Her prophet had an entourage trying to come against the one prophet of God. Mm-hmm. Four hundred and fifty, four hundred and fifty prophets tried to come. That's an entourage. Four hundred and fifty prophets tried to come against one prophet, and then they had another four hundred down in the grove. Hmm. Can I, can I give that a name? We're going to call them the cookie cutter prophet. Do we still have some of them today? Do we still have some of them it. today? Somebody. <laughs> you better believe it. Somebody. Do we have cookie cutter prophets today? I can go to Talk five me. different Talk services. Me. Huh? Yeah. Answer that prophet. Come on, yeah, prophet. And I. No, what I was saying was absolutely we have cookie cookie cutter prophets, prophets who are um, who are able to be uh, as I believe Prophet Garland was the one that uh, said or uh, brought it out. Uh, they're able to be hired. Uh, they're able to be instructed on what to say and what not to say. Uh, and, and what I wanted to say in the last segment was the reason why um, prophets have such a bad rap. One is because the witch has become more accurate than the prophet because the prophet doesn't spend time with God like they used to. The second thing is because, as, as uh, Apostle Whitlow brought out, when the man of God began to expose by, by way of the Holy Ghost uh, what was in the atmosphere and what was in the room, they wanted to shut him up. The reason why prophets have a bad rap is because individuals don't want to hear what God is really saying. And so as long as you're saying what God is saying and it's pulling my cover out, I don't want to hear you. And so mm-hmm. if it means that my check is going to be cut in half or I'm going to be uh, kicked out of the church and never invited back, I won't touch this or I won't touch that. But there is a remnant. There is a voice. There are a people who will prophesy and say what thus saith the Lord, regardless of the dollar amount, regardless of how many people are in the room, and regardless of whether people like it or not. I, I, I guess I can say this and it's safe to say I come up under a generation where you know, whether you like it or not, you better say what God say. Don't you be afraid to say what God say, and don't be afraid of men in their faces. Because at the end of the day, you have a responsibility to declare what God is saying, because that blood will be required at your hand, whether they receive it or not. Mm. Now, it, it you brought that out, because you're right. Scripture tells the prophet to set your face like split, and then they As don't recognize it in this day and age. And they think they sound so cute in the presence of the general public. What is this with us? And I'm not just talking about prophets. I'm talking about preachers, pastors, evangelists, anybody that fits the five-fold ministry bill. Why do we have to be so glorious in the presence of people? If ministry were meant to be glorious, any and everybody would be able to do it. It is those who get in the trenches in prayer and those who understand the essence of prayer and the essence of communication with Almighty God and to hear God's heart so that they can have God's mind and they can be God's voice. Where are those people? When we deal with the cookie-cutter prophet, and I got to go back to what Apostle Smith was talking about just a few minutes ago, we still got 450 prophets of Baal out there with 400 in the valley just waiting to have their opportunity and chance so they can for the people and holler, I see, I see, I see. I see you going to hell if you don't get it right. That's what I see. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I, I want to say this. One one thing is certain, and we learned this according to Amos 3 and 3. How can uh-huh. two walk together except they be agreed? This scripture does not pertain to marriage. This no. scripture pertains to the prophet's relationship with the Lord. 
The prophet cannot say anything that doesn't agree with what God wants people to hear because a prophet seeks the mind, the mouth, and the mission of God. And so people yes. who are not listening for the mind, the mouth, or the mission of God, they are missing what God is really saying. And a true prophet cannot just go off of emotions or, as Apostle Smith said, cannot go off of a facial feature. One other thing I'd like to submit to you, prophets do not read people like a book oh. because because that, that's got people messed up. You know, no, we're not here to read you because we're not – we're not psychics. We're not here to read you because we're not reading the stars. No, we want to tell you what we hear God say or what we see God showing us because that's what happens when God raises up a true man or woman of God. And let me just help you so that you don't miss this. The Bible says in Amos 3 and 7, Surely, oh, I feel something in my sweet sanctified pinky toe. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveals his secret unto his servant, the prophet. The so prophet. sometimes you can't get no answers. You can't get no instructions. You can't get no direction if God does not send you a prophet. The reason he sends a yeah. prophet is because the prophet has your word. It is your word that brings your healing. It is your word that brings your deliverance. It is your word that brings your promise. It is your word that propels you into the place that God wants you to be. If you're not willing to receive the prophet of God, you're not really willing to receive the word that you're not willing to receive the word that God has to be like, I'm trying not to get happy, but I need you people to understand when God raises up a prophet, and let me tell you something, when God raises up a prophet, that prophet will raise up your lifestyle. When God raises a prophet, the prophet will raise up your standard. When God raises a prophet, the Lord the prophet will raise your income. You better hear me. When God raises a prophet, things in your life have to raise. Okay, I'm, I'm stopping. I'm stopping. I'm sorry. I got happy. I'm ha- I got happy. Let, let me let, let me let well, me Pastor tune in on that. Let me tune in on that because I, I want to talk, and I'm glad he said what he said through the Holy Ghost because now what came to me will make sense. I I I I, I don't try to call myself a prophet even though I walk uh-huh. in it. But here here's the thing, and I want to show you that this thing is not all. Glitz and glamour, it's not all fun and games. I went to a church, I went to a church one Sunday to preach. And as I was preaching, the Lord revealed to me that there was some manner of confusion going on within the church. And he let me know Uh, that it was between the two pastors that were using the same building. But the Lord said, out of my mouth, get this situation together, or I will put a padlock on this door. All right. Three weeks later, I had to preach at another church in that same city, and I had to ride by that church. When I rode by it, what was on the door? A padlock. Right now. It's, it's not glitz and glamour. I was preaching down in Newark, New Jersey. And the Lord began to use me to minister, and I stopped. And there was a particular church that was there that night joining in with the meeting, and the Lord told me to tell them, either you take whoever that person is that got their hand on the pastor, he said, tell them to stop it, or they're going to die. I said they're not going to be sick. They're not going to get hit by a car. Not going to get shot. Ain't going to be none of that kind of stuff. I said they're going to be well and just going to drop dead. Mm, My goodness. The the person that cut out their stuff, got up one Saturday morning, went to the store, brought some food and stuff for the church, and they were going to be feeding the next day. Got out the car to go in the house and fell dead on the sidewalk. You want to know something you not- brought to mind, Apostle Smith? When the scripture says, not mine anointing, neither do my prophets any harm. 
have to understand that prophet and that man of God walking in the office of the prophet is not one who walks in the counsel of the ungodly. He's not the type who stands in the way of sinners. He does not sit in the seat of the scornful. His absolute delight is where? In the law of the Lord. He's seriously trying to meditate and permeate his spirit and put himself in a position where he is so intent in the presence of God, and this is something that a lot of us to do when we first came up, but we done got a little older and got a little wiser, and I guess we done got a little beefy, spiritually speaking, and we don't understand what it means. If I can use this analogy, if a lot of us could get ourselves in a position that you were in a swimming pool, what is around you when you get in that pool? There's water everywhere. This is how we have to get in the presence of God. This is how we have to get the word in our spirit and permeating us like that. If our delight's in the law of the Lord and we're meditating on his law day and night, you can't help but flow. You can't help but grow. You won't be nothing less than willing to go because you heard from the Lord. You're a thousand percent sure that it was God, and you're not in a position where you have to second guess God or question God. Now there is something I want to throw because I said this last week because I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in the motor work right here. Put this for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Think about this for a hot minute. Now, we had a situation where Samuel was supposed to deliver a message to Saul. And I know our, our friend, uh, uh, Apostle Smith, uh, Bishop Woodson, brought this up. He said he was going to preach a message soon, and I'm still waiting to get my hands on that message when he preaches. What do you do when the prophet is wrong? My challenge to that is, is the prophet, the eagle-eyed prophet, the true man of God, really wrong, or did he just miss God that time? Somebody answer that. Good question. Somebody deal with it. Come on, deal with it, you guys. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in right here. Um, and mm-hmm. I think it's safe to say this that God is never wrong, so the prophet can't be wrong. Uh huh. Now, okay, is that always the case? Absolutely not, because sometimes, All right. and and I I'm guilty of this at times. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to me. And what mm-hmm. I do or what I have done in times past is I've tried to figure out or make it make sense. And I'll play around with the word. And by the time I got done, and I had to repent for this a plenty of times, by the time I got done, I had messed up what God had said completely because I didn't know how the individual was going to receive me. Now, had I just said right. what God said and not second guessed it, God would never be wrong. So the prophet can't be wrong. But here's the thing. Right. The, sad reality, the sad reality is, and I've heard many people say this, is that God speaks to me just like he speaks to the prophet, and that's not necessarily the truth. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. I not say necessarily. That's not the truth at all. I've heard many mm-hmm. people all say, right. God speaks to me just like he speaks to you, and if he's spoken to you, he'll speak it to me. My thing is this, is if you don't listen to your leader, what makes you think that God is going to speak to you at all? Woo! Uh oh! Say that. Houston, we have a problem. Say that. If you don't obey problem. what, if you don't obey anything that your leader has said, and your leader, watch this, your leader is your prophet. If you don't regard the voice of your leader, God is not going to take time to speak to you because you're already ignoring Him when He's speaking through the mouth of your prophet. My God, Hallelujah, man! You done started some trouble up here. It's gonna be some dance on Facebook if you. <laughs> mm. no, I love that. You're absolutely right. How is it that somebody let's talk about serving me. Now I, I we're down here. We've done a food distribution and we and I I've brought some of the leadership down here and, and I don't say much about it right now. I'll give my full report of the But you know, just keep keep the prayer and it's excellent, a superb, beautiful, and then there are those who just need some training. But I like what you said. How on earth do you expect to hear from God when you can't even hear the words of your own leader, who happens to be the mouthpiece of God that stands before you on a daily basis? Come on, I know somebody mm-hmm. else beside me has to say about that. But 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 watch this though. Watch this. Let's merge. Let's merge. The question asked 
and the statement mm-hmm. just made. Okay. Actually, what happens is, in a prophetic moment, uh-huh. we try to become stars rather than a spokesman. There you go. Uh oh. There you go. He's right. And what we want, what we want to do, is make the word fancy, but uh-huh. it don't need to be fancy. It just needs to be straight out. Mm-hmm. There you go. See, because whenever God is speaking, it don't need no help. Uh oh. It just needs to be spoken. Yes. One thing, mm-hmm. one thing I learned in these years of ministering is that when the Holy Ghost gives you something to say, you don't need to work on it, fix it, guess it, uh, 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 fluff it up, or none of that, because the Holy Ghost is accurate. Yes. 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 And anything beyond the Holy Ghost, your flesh is hanging. Mm-hmm. Come on. Just, just like a just like a woman with a slip uh, that that that's too big or, or too long for the dress she got on, she done pulled it up almost to her neck, not to slip down under the skirt. Mm. That's what happens with a lot of prophets. We get up in the anointing, and if we're not careful as we progress along, our flesh start hanging. Mm. Amen. And we get it, and we get in south because things are going so good. And if you're not careful, the devil start letting you say to yourself, "Oh, I'm ripping it up in here tonight. You ain't doing nothing." Uh, mm. If God ain't My talking, goodness. you better hurry up tonight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because because in Old Testament times, if you had done that and gotten the flesh. They be having a stoning party for you the next day. Mm-hmm. So we got to be careful. We got to be careful about allowing the flesh to stand up in God's business, and then we get off course. As Prophet Leek said, God is always accurate, and because the Holy Ghost can only say to us what God says, the Holy Ghost is always accurate. We get our own little fake self in the way and want to act like we God. Mm. Oh, stay yeah. with God. Getting... Stay with God and say what God is saying. And be done. Go back. I, I want to get to that second half of that question. So to give us a direct answer for those who listen by way of radio, we thank every one of you for joining us in this particular discussion. One thing you need to learn is that in a time when you think prophet is wrong, never mind trying to guess at what the prophet is up to and whether or not that prophet is right or wrong. Here's what you do. Sit back, wait, and watch. Because there's a scripture in Romans, I believe it's 828, that simply says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and will call according to his purpose. And even in those times when it's like or may be like the prophet has missed it. The prophet hasn't actually missed it. He probably just jumped the gun. Because I mean, I, I speak for myself. I, I'm not a prophet, but I'm allowed from time to time to walk in the prophetic. And in those times when God allows me to walk in the prophetic, there are times I, I've gone to a church in Baton Rouge, and I might as well just say this because this is a very good example. And I shared a word with a couple that God is getting ready to launch them out into ministry. But they mu- and I said to them specifically, you must stay under the guidance of your leader to get where God wants you to go. I wasn't out of that place two months, but gone and opened the church. And within 90 days, that church was closed just as fast as it was open. Was I mm. wrong? I possibly because maybe I shouldn't have given them that much information. I was only speaking what I heard in my spirit, but God didn't actually tell me to tell the whole story. Does that make sense to anybody? It does. It does. I, um, right. And here's, so, here's the reality, um, being that the Lord has called me into this particular area, and uh, especially the office of a prophet and understanding the prophetic uh, and so on and so mm-hmm. forth, I, I, I understand that. Sometimes God will give you something, 
right? And he'll give it to you to release to people. But again, because people refuse to stay in the right place that they can develop. Because one thing I've discovered about a prophetic word from the Lord, you can receive it today, but it doesn't mean it is supposed to manifest tomorrow. Something, That's right. if you will, some things you have to grow into. Um, and I believe that oftentimes what God wants to do is he wants to make sure that your character is developed before he manifests what has been spoken and or promised in your life. Because one thing That's is certain, right. when God sends a word, he says it will not return to him void, but it will, it will accomplish that with, for which he, he sent it. So when God sends a word, he has a purpose for it, but you cannot rush it. And most of all, you cannot make it the way you want it because that's what you think. I want to share this one more thing. I discovered some years ago that the Bible says every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. I want you to understand that sometimes that lust is your anxiety for what you're looking for because you're hurting. And so when it looks like something could happen, what you'll do is you'll jump into it prematurely, and then when it falls apart, you want to get mad at everybody else instead of getting mad at yourself because of your lust, which was your anxiety to try to make something happen that God had already planned to happen if you would have just walked the plan. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. But now listen, we're down to the last, uh, the, 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 the final few minutes of today, tonight's broadcast. Thank you, Facebook audience, for joining us. I know a lot of you have come in. Some have, have joined in on the conversation, have put their comments out there. Some are just sitting back listening. And I thank God for each and every one of you, those of you by iHeartRadio, Spricker Radio, those by Blog Talk Radio, those by YouTube. Uh, and all the different social media events out there. We bless God for every one of you listening to us. This is the Pastor Corner. I'm overseer Ernest E. Richard Jr., along with Apostle Irvin Whitlow, along also with Apostle Vincent L. Smith, uh, Prophet Torin Lee, and Prophet Plachette Garland. We thank you guys for being on here. Now, Prophet Plachette, we haven't heard from you in a minute. So I know you got something you got to add as we come down to a close. Let's give some final thoughts here, gentlemen. We'll go Prophet Plachette, then Prophet Torin, and then uh, Prophet uh, Apostle, Prophet Apostle Whitlow, and then uh, Apostle Vincent L. Smith in that order. So come on, where are you at, Prophet Plachette? I think she tipped out. I'm not sure. Tipped out? Okay. Yeah, I think she we're gonna out. So we're going to do another one. What happens when the prophet tips out? No, we ain't going to do that. Come on, <laughs> prophet. <laughs> <laughs> it just had to be All right, prophet Lee, come on. All right. Just want to say again, it was good to be on with you guys tonight. Uh, definitely enjoyed the conversation, the dialogue. Um, I will conclude with this scripture. As already quoted, uh, if you believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. If you believe in his prophet, so shall you prosper. As Apostle Whitlow said, it's not necessarily in the prosperity, but it's in the health. If you see that you are in a struggle, if you see that you need direction, you're having a hard time, you don't know what to do, seek the voice of God and seek the prophet because there is an answer in the mouth of the prophet. Now, if the word does not come to pass, the scripture says, don't you be afraid. You don't have to get your ruffles, your, uh, your feathers ruffled. You don't have to be upset. But God is always speaking. You wait until God speaks to you. But I assure you that God has a prophet that has an answer for your solution. Amen. 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 Well, 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 prophet uh, Leek, we are so grateful that you were able to join us. And we pray that you will make it a habit to join in with us on these uh, times that we are here with the Pastor's Corner. Um, it has been a very great year, a very inspiring year. Amen. And we thank God for the additions to the cast, uh, or if you will, or to the team um, that God has given us in adding Apostle Vincent Smith this year and allowing Prophet uh, Plachette Garland to join in with us. At times, um, Elder 
uh, Kenyatta Garland and uh, Elder Keisha Hamlin and, and some of the others, yeah. you know, and certainly we miss those who are not here. We we do miss Pastor Dowell and Donna Pointer and Pastor uh, Westbrook. We miss them when they're not here. Amen. But we thank God at all times because he brings on who needs to be here and those who need to hear. But let me say this yeah. as I as I go. Um uh, Remember this, that the biggest thing that God sends a prophet for is for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He did that so that the witches wouldn't destroy the church. I pray that you got something out of that. Until next time, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Apostle Smith, it's on you. Let, let me say in, in this close tonight that I must speak the word of the late Reverend Ike when he spoke concerning the prophet Bishop E. Bernard Jordan. He yes. said these words about the prophet. The prophet's mm-hmm. job is not to get something from you, but to get something to you. Amen. Let me say that again. The prophet's job is not to get something from you, but to get something to you. To you. Mm. And I want you to understand every person that has listened in on these wonderful discussions for the last few weeks, those of you that have just tuned in for tonight, and those that have been following the discussion. I want you to know, don't be fooled. Don't be disturbed. God has prophets in the land that are still telling the truth, walking holy, and doing Mm -hmm. his will. I suggest tonight, as you have heard, first follow your in-house prophet called the pastor. Mm-hmm. Before uh-huh. you go run into a service Where a prophet Has come in town Because if you can't call the in-house You ain't got no business At another service Trying to get a word The mm-hmm. Lord bless you and we love you Oh the prophet has walked back in Hallelujah they want to get Amen. Oh, What to do when the prophet comes back <laughs> 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 It, it, as he prepares to uh, Prophet Blachette, are you there? It will be for a minute or two. Okay. Uh, we're wrapping up, uh, you know, and we want to hear some final comments from you. Okay. That's less than why it's wearing me out. No, I. Okay. All right. Well, she, uh, uh, Prophet Pochette, we'll come right back to you. Let me simply say this. I want to thank you once again, each and every one of you, for joining us tonight. I know it's been a lively discussion over the last few weeks, and tonight for the first time in over a month, I've been able to get back to do Facebook Live, but it only tells me that my schedule personally has gotten to that. But this is not about me. To those of you that are listening to us, to those of you that are even watching us, the Pastor's Corner really is about today's event, current event, kingdom, uh, kingdom, uh, 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 kingdom events, and current events. Boy, what's wrong with my English tonight? Anyway, the bottom line is simply this: we love you, and as we, this is going to be our final live show for 2019. We'll be coming back the second Thursday. Is that right, Prophet uh, um, um, Apostle? Whitlow, the second Thursday yeah, in January. Yeah. Come back yeah. the second Thursday. We're going to cover a lot of different subjects. One subject that I plan to cover in the year 2020, and I'm going to ask this question now so that you can all play with it in the back of your mind because each of you on this line will have an opportunity and chance to lead this discussion. And here is my question. In a day and age when it seems like women are running everything, my question is, is there a man? in the house. We're going to ask that question, and we're going to answer that question in the days to come. 
you know. Uh, uh, Bishop Bello, I see you there. Uh, thank you, sir, for tuning in and taking the time. The Blessed Network, uh, always a great place, and they were with us when we were down at Elation's Honors, and they did such an awesome job in broadcasting for us. We thank God for sharing your ministry with us because you did not have to do it, but you found it in your heart to come all the way to St. Louis, Missouri, and to make sure that you were there for every every opportunity, every broadcast. Now, Prophet Clichette Garland, are you ready for some final Yes, I am. My apologies, my apologies, my apologies. In closing, what I just have to say is this, um, when it comes to... Um, dealing with you know um, the you you your call and the prophet um, the prophet, I feel as though people have to deal with their identity crisis. I'll say it like mm. that: their identity crisis and knowing who they are and not allowing people to put an identity on them. And I think that's where a lot of this confusion comes in when it comes to a lot of the prophets um, because. Um, you can you can be in a high service and God will use you. Then all of a sudden you're a prophet and now you're allowing somebody to put that 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 identity on you and that's not who God has called you to be. So I think when the when the body begins to deal with the identity issues that a lot of us that well not a lot of people have, um, we'll start to see a difference in the body. Mm. All right. Amen. Amen. She's trying to start all right. another broadcast tonight. <laughs> you just don't know the broadcast. Let's oh, see trouble, y'all. Yeah. Now listen, so, uh, I don't want to leave the airwaves out. Have some of you, some of you out there watching this broadcast right now, listening to this broadcast right now, feel like you're in the end. You feel like you've come to the end of your road. And should I all of a sudden go off the airways, gentlemen? Somebody pick up for me because the, the overheat and the power go at a certain time. And when the power goes out, you lose your connection. So stay with me and stay close by me, gentlemen, because somebody may very well have to pick up and literally close out for me. Sister Kimmy Kim, I need you to get prepared to come on because we want to hear from you, our wonderful producer. You've been with us all year. You have chased us down for so many different shows to make sure that we were on time and ready to move forward. So prep yourself to get ready to come on after I make these comments and make this call to salvation. To those of you watching, listening, wherever you may be, there are things, three things you need to know. If you are roaming through the face of this earth and you have not made a connection with God through his son, Jesus Christ, if you've not committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not made a decision to allow God to make you part of his family, there are three things you need to know. A, number one, there is still hope for you. Number two, there's a way for you. And last but no means least, it is up to you. I like to call these the ABCs of salvation. You have to first acknowledge the fact that Jesus Christ is, in fact, the Lord of lords and the King of kings, and that one day he's coming back to get his church. If you're not part of that church, you're already out the box, but we're going to get you in there because here's how you can come into the box and be part of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. All you have to do is believe that he came, suffered, bled, and died, and gave his life to you on the third day, rising with all power in his hand. And the last thing you have to do is confess with your mouth. Here's what the word says in Romans 10, verse 8. It says, but what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, the word says it. It isn't Elder Richard. It isn't Apostle Whitlow. It's not Apostle Smith. It's not Prophet Leak. It's not Prophet Garland. It's not uh, Pastor Kenyatta. It's none of us. The word says, thou shalt be saved. Well, let's talk some languages that you understand. The word says, you Shall. Shall is a word that is mandatory. It has to happen. God is not a man. God says the thing, it shall come to pass. And if you're concerned about your life, if you died right now, this very second, where would you open your eyes in eternity? Would it be the bosom of the Lord or would it be in flames of torment that place? If you're willing to give your heart to the Lord Jesus 
Christ, then please share. Just say the simple prayer with us, and we will lead you to a lasting relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I say this often. I get to see a baby come out of its mother's womb and fry chicken and make baby and biscuits and all that stuff. A baby had to have it start at birth. So here comes the start of your birth. Just simply say, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that sin, and I am in need of a savior. Jesus, I come to be the Lord of my life. I don't know how to live this life, but I know you will teach me. Right now, by faith, I confess with my mouth, because I believe in my heart, that you were raised from the dead. Be the Lord of my life. Take control of my life. Share with me. Nurture me. And bring me to the place that you want me to be. From this day forward, by faith, I receive you as Lord. You are Lord of my life. I confess it with my mouth. In Jesus' name, thank you for allowing me to be part of your great family. Now, if you prayed that prayer, and I'm going to either have Apostle Smith or Apostle Whitlow pray a prayer of sealing over you. And the reason why we want to pray a, a, a prayer of sealing over you is because as soon as you get off this broadcast, you must know that the enemy is after you. He thinks you're his property. He thinks you belong to him. He thinks still your boss. But you need to understand that you just changed partners. And the dance you dance now is going to be the dance of life eternal and not death eternal. So without further ado, one of you gentlemen, please come and heal our brothers and sisters, those who have received Jesus Christ with a, a prayer of assurance. Invite them to go to a church somewhere in their neighborhood. Either one of you. Come on. I'll take that responsibility tonight. <laughs> of course. Precious Father, we thank you right now that for every life, every person that has received you into their life, into their spirit, man, tonight, we seal their salvation tonight, and we draw the bloodline about their lives, about their homes, about their minds, and we rebuke the enemy even now from coming nigh their dwelling to bother their life, but, Lord God, make their life in you fulfilling, successful. And, God, most of all, make it powerful through the auspices of the Holy Ghost. And so, God, we praise you right now that they shall become strong and do great exploits, and their life shall never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And all right, Apostle Whitlow, let's begin to close it down. But before we do, Kimmy Kim, I know you're close by, and I pray that you are right there. Mike, we need you to come on. I see that Pastor Don wants to come on to social media and onto the feed. We're still praying for you, Pastor. Your husband, recognizing that uh, he had a minor ordeal or a terrible ordeal, I should say, last week, and we thank God for his recovery, and we're going to keep you in our prayers. I know Pastor Westbrook is preparing for a revival out there in California, so keep them in your prayers wherever they may be. Sister Kimmy Kim, can we hear from you? Going once, Sister Kimmy Kim, uh, can we hear from you? See, she's messing with us now. You know that? Yeah. Kim, yeah. <laughs> come on for me, girl. You know she. Oh, you know she's from the south side. She's from the south side of St. Louis. That's why she ain't talking. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, 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 can't let y'all be the damn like that. But she'll come on. You know, and uh, really, uh, you know, we want to go ahead and start closing down. We got just a, well. We actually out of time, but we're going to go ahead. All right, Sister Kimmy, Kim, just we can't say a word. Get the song ready at least. Go ahead, Prophet uh, Apostle Whitlow. 
We want to say thanks to each and every one of you for joining us on the Pastor's Corner. This is the last broadcast for the Pastor's Corner this year. So having said that, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Secondly, if you don't have money to buy a gift, give somebody your love. Third of all, know that the reason for the season is Jesus Christ. Keep that in mind. Keep that in your heart, and I believe everything will be all right. Most of all, don't eat all the food you can for the holiday. Just can all you eat, and what you can't eat, still eat, and save some for next year so you'll still have something to eat. And don't gain all this weight talking about next year. I'm going to lose weight. That's my New Year's resolution because you said the same thing last year, and I'm going to leave right there. My final words to you is go with God, and he will, and he will go with you until the second uh, Thursday in the new year. Take care. Peace. Be blessed. We're out from the pastor's corner. I am Apostle Irvin Whitlow with uh, with Overseer Ernest Richard, uh, Apostle uh, Vincent Smith, Prophet Torin Leak, Prophet uh, 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 Plachette Garland, and all of us from the various parts of the earth. We say we love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Kimmy Kim, take us away. Jesus Christ to die for my sins. 
Everything you did for me is not in vain. I know we live in a crooked and corrupted world, but in my life, I appreciate you for all things. You are all in all. I just want to tell you, thank you. I love you. Yes. You appreciate it. Deep within my heart, I love you. Amen.